Hello, my name is Armin and I'm a product specialist at Notch. In this short tutorial, we'll talk about Chroma Key Node. This is more or less the setup that we're after. I think we're ready to get started. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to make a new layer. So I'm calling it Chroma Key. And I'm going to add a first node. My first node will be image 2D because we need some kind of an output for our image. So image 2D produces us a little white quad. That's great. Now I need a video in source. Now the reason why I'm using video in source node is because I have a live camera feed going to notch right now. So our initial setup is complete. Uh, I think we're ready to add chroma key node. I'm going to apply it straight on the video source. There we go. Not bad results straight from the start. Before we address any of the settings in the node, I think it's important for us to build a little bit more dynamic background. So I'm going to make a copy of this image 2D and I'm going to connect it to the root. Now notice, as soon as I add second image 2D, it makes me a new white quad and it's very important where do I keep this new image 2D in a stacking order. Notch reads nodes from top to bottom and if it doesn't recognize the stacking order from top to bottom, it would refer it from left to right. So be aware of that when you are creating your designs. Now, in my case, I want to build the background, so I'm going to keep it above, so it always stays in the back. Here in the resources, I have a one image available for me. It's a 3D render of a little cityscape. I think it's going to work just fine for us for exactly that reason. OK, I think now we're definitely ready to start addressing different settings in Chroma Key Note. So before we make any tweaks to all of these available brackets, I want to point out that it's very important to follow the consecutive order of operations using this node. So we strongly recommend to always start with the first one and then go through all of the available options till you hit the last one. So with that said, I'm going to start with Clean Plate Generator. Here I want to produce a perfect green screen background for myself as a referral. Let's see, as I'm moving about, this looks quite solid, this looks quite good. Maybe I could make it smaller here. Yes, I'm definitely happy with this setting. Now, obviously you're not restricted to using a just auto-generate from greens setting. As you see, generation mode has quite a few other options. So should you be working with the blue screen or if you want to generate the color using a color picker, you have options. So for generating color with a color picker, it would be the third one. Auto-generate using color picker, color as hint. Now with that property selected, you have three options on how to choose the actual green or blue color. You have color picker, windows color picker, and a picker that allows you to choose directly from the viewport. I'm going to set it back to default green. Right, so with that said, I think we're ready to move on to the next bracket, fully keyed areas. So fully keyed areas defines where a notch should regard the screen or where in screen a notch should see a full chroma. So anything that is red here, is considered full chroma color and will not be altered, tweaked, or processed any further. There we go. I think I'm going to leave it at this. I want a little bit of uh, processing happening with my hair. I'm going to address it further as we progress. But this, this works fine. The third bracket we have here is solid areas. So solid areas would be the exact opposite of the previous setting. This is exactly where Notch wants to define and know where is your talent or where is your object that is not to be touched, which is completely solid. I think this works too. Let's preview. Right, I think I'm going to stick with that. While working with the chroma key setups, you might come across some footage that is just not perfect. For instance, there might be some holes in your talent or your object. Uh, we have a property called hardened interior. So should you have some inconsistencies in the talent or in the object, always stick on hardened interiors and then you have a property to increase or decrease its amount. And that will definitely help you with smoothing out that surface. Now, in my case, I don't think I actually need it, so I'm just going to leave it off. So moving forward, we have transparencies and edges. So the easiest way to describe this bracket is contrast setting for the overall node. So basically, you have a amount property. We can preview. And then you have a threshold for the fine tuning. And of course, you can choose to clip out the black or white, depending on what footage or what setting you have. Now, in my case, I'm quite happy with the default. So yet again, I'm just going to leave it be. 
There is one more setting in this bracket that I would like to mention, and that's shrink transparency edges. Sometimes you might come across footage that just has a little green outline around your object or around your talent. Be sure to tick on shrink transparency edges, and then you will have fine-tuned control over the shrink transparency edge. Right, further down the list, we have spill suppression. The first setting here is global suppression. I think I'm gonna tick that on as it definitely helps me out with a artifacts here next to my hair. Now, this is a color mixer. So basically it takes a green color or whatever you see is green and it tries to replace it with a mix of red and blue color. Further down, we have reflection suppression. Now, in this case, we don't have any reflective surface but if we were working with glass or any specular material, this property right here would be very important. Now, in our case, again, it's just not needed. And now we're in the last bracket, so that's smoothing and refinement. First setting right here is uh, temporal smoothing. So temporal smoothing helps you out with the performance. If you see that you lack performance or would like to increase it, uh, tick temporal smoothing on and your GPU will run smoother and faster. Now, in my case, I don't necessarily feel I should do that or I need that because I'm running in a 4K resolution. And my frame rate is oscillating from 300 to to 500 frames. So I think in my case, this setting is just not needed. So further down, we have smooth transparency and that helps out with smoothing things. Uh, I think this looks much better when it's on, so I'm gonna definitely keep it. And then the last setting we have available for us is smooth color. I'm gonna tick that on as well. There we go. I'm quite happy with this scheme. We spent a couple of minutes setting up. I think we're in a good place. So before I say goodbye and let you go, I'm gonna show you a little demo of how Notch handles glass. So this is more or less what you get straight out of the box. We didn't set any specific parameters for specularity or for reflectance, but this is what you can expect as soon as you add chroma key node. So with that said, I think this is time to part ways. Uh, thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. See you in the next one.